I remember I would come out of the house to go to school and women would meet outside there to laugh at me. Ha 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 ha. And they would talk and they would hurt me. Good evening and praise the Lord. What a season that Jesus died and rose again from the dead. And this Resurrection Sunday, we have a reason to smile because our salvation was purchased and came at a price that has made all of us happy and are able to testify. This is a gorgeous woman show and we're always delighted to empower, to inspire and to encourage somebody that is going through a difficult time. And we always have gracious ladies and call them gorgeous ladies that are willing to testify and share of the goodness of God. And today I'm privileged to have such a guest by the name of Gladys Wanjiko. She's from Nakuru County. As you know, we are on lockdown. She can't go home. Uh, I'm also from Nyandarwa County. I'm locked, we can't go home. Wherever you are locked at, let's enjoy this moment and know that God is on our side. So Karibu Sana Gladys. Thank you, Reverend. Yeah, always yeah. a joy to have a guest seated there. We've had many inspiring stories from that seat. Yes. And I believe yours is another one. Yes. Uh, that uh, dates back um, from your childhood mm -hmm. where you went to school when you were a grown-up. <laughs> yes. Now that journey we'll talk about. Yes. But before we talk about that, can you tell us who Gladys Wajiko is? Yeah, first of all, let me start by saying thank you very much yes. for having me on this seat. Yeah. I think I'm one of the beneficiaries of the many stories that have happened here. Ah, I have yeah. watched them, I've gotten inspired. Yes. And um, I am so happy to be here at the Gorgeous Woman Show. Yes. My name is Gladys Wanjiko. Okay. I'm born in Nakuru County mm -hmm. in a family of three. Okay. And I am a firstborn in that family. Oh, awesome. Yes. yes How um, does it feel to be a firstborn? Oh, some, it's good, but sometimes it's overwhelming because yes. you feel like you are the mother. Oh, you are the mother. <laughs> you ah. take the position of the mother at times. Yes. I am raised by a single mother. Okay. And I'm myself a single mother. Oh, okay. Of How one? many? Of one? Of one. Okay. Yeah, but now God has blessed me with three others that yeah. we'll be talking about in the show. Okay. Yes. I'll see you are branded. Uh, you are, the t-shirt is blessed to transform. I can be the change. Could you tell us more about how you're wearing? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, you know, you've, I, I like how you have started the, 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 the show yeah. by saying that uh, our salvation was purchased yeah. because Jesus was ready to lay his life down for us. Yes. So if us, we are able also to lay our lives down for others, yes. it makes more meaning. Yes. It takes the work of Jesus further. Amen. So blessed to transform is an initiative that we run in Korogocho slums ah. for helping the, the, the kids in Korogocho. Okay. We cook every day for more than 100 kids. Wow. Yeah. So most of them are on medication, mm -hmm. long-term medication. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Korogocho slums, hunger is so real. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Actually, I always joke around and tell people, if you have a very nice vehicle, mm -hmm. you go with it in Korogocho, and you go with two packets of unga. And you tell somebody, I'll, I want to, you to choose the car keys or the unga. They will always choose the unga over the car keys. Wow. That's how serious it is. And Korogosho is not so far away from the CBD. It's not very far. Wow. So yeah. how do you do that? You go to schools or you do it um, in the homes? We have a feeding center. Okay. We have got one school that we have created a good rapport with mm -hmm. because we don't have a facility of our own. Mm -hmm. So we use the school facility to cook for them mm -hmm. and feed them from there Okay. every day. Every day? Every How many day? meals? One meal. For now, we afford one meal per day yes. because we are doing it. We don't have a donor. Yeah. We do it with the well wishers. Yes. Actually, the community people, somebody come and drop one packet of hunger, two kilos of rice. That's how we manage to feed them. Wow. Yes. So how do you select your audience? Uh, like mostly we do the, the sickly ones. I don't want to mention where yeah. they are sick, yeah. but they are on long-term long medication. Mm -hmm. Those are our, our main focus uh, beneficiaries so that they are able to keep up with the medication. Okay. You know, every time we go to the hospital, yeah. even if it's a slight uh, illness, yeah. the doctor tells you to 
take good meal before you eat, mm. before you take the medication. Yes. So those ones, we have very keen eye on them mm -hmm. so that they are able to put up with their medication. Mm -hmm. And also now those ones who are from very harsh homes, okay. maybe orphans or people, who are, you, their families, you just look like this and you feel this one really deserves. Allow me to delve further into what you do. Mm. How do you vet them? or select the audience because mm. you can imagine if food is that limited in Korogosho yeah. and I'm only dealing with a hundred, mm -hmm. how do you vet them? Yeah, it's actually a very big challenge mm -hmm. and a very hurting moment mm -hmm. when we close the gate and tell them no, no more. Mm -hmm. And they're all there at the gate. They want to come inside and get something to bite. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now what you're focusing on are those who have got their clinic cards. cards. I get you. Yeah, so okay. they can prove that I go to this clinic, yeah. I take this medication, so we bring them on board. Okay. Then with time, maybe when we, we expand, mm -hmm. we are able now to, we shall be able to accommodate more. I'm looking forward to a day when you can feed more than a thousand kids. Wow. Because food is so precious. Wow. So precious. What a, what and I always an tell people, when mm. you when you take food, when you take your dinner and you have something left, Maybe you throw it in the dustbin or you put it in the fridge. Think of somebody who has slept hungry for three days in yeah. Korogocho. Yeah. Think uh, when, during the KCPE time, just a few mm. weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, we fed 100 candidates for the three exam days because most of them come to sit for the exam hungry. Wow. Actually, the head teacher of that school used to make very conch strong tea early in the morning. Very conch so that that, energy, that sugar can convert into energy to serve them throughout the exam time. Wow. So we came in and we started mobilizing friends and networks. Wow. Then now we are able to feed them. And you will be sh so shocked, Reverend, to hear a, a child saying, my God, I'm eating eggs for three days. You know, every yes. breakfast they have an egg, they're eating one egg. But it's so unbelievable for that child. Wow, what yeah. a story. I'm almost getting convicted now. <laughs> because definitely as a CTN family and House of Judah Foundation, we are, we are big on you know, supporting the needy. And mm. uh, I think this is the second or third time I've heard about Korogosho and Madare and the kind of initiatives that are there. And I think in this is just time, we can partner with many well-wishers like Gladys. See you after the break as we hear the rest of the story. Yeah. So welcome back our viewer and once again happy happy Easter Resurrection Sunday. We are so excited that Jesus is risen. He is no longer in the grave. He is the son of God, the prince of peace and the reason why we are so happy in this season. My guest Gladys Wanjiko has an amazing story and before we went for the break she touched on issues that really are close to our heart about touching the poor and being that woman that will bring the change that society and community needs. So Gladys, to yes. let's, uh, let's talk, uh, talk now about your personal life. We'll go back to your feeding program. Yes. Um, so tell me about your academic background because yes. there is a, quite a story out yes. of that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there is quite a story yeah. and actually the reason for what we do today. Yes. Because I'm still at where you say Jesus laid our lives for us. Yes. So we, we try as much as we, we can to lay our lives for others. Mm -hmm. And uh, my academic journey is the one that inspires me for what I do today in the slum yeah. because it has not been easy. Mm -hmm. I finished class eight and joined form one like any other child mm -hmm. and went up to form three. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I went up to form three, mm -hmm. my school fees had accumulated. Remember, I'm brought up by a single mother. Yes. So just before I got to form three, my mom fell sick mm -hmm. and the disease advanced. So at some point she became bedridden and she wasn't able to go and look for, for money and get a, a bread for us. Mm -hmm. So at that point, at my school, now the school fees has accumulated, we were sent home, those with wow. big balances, mm -hmm. to go and were bring you in a boarding money. school? Yes, I was okay. in a boarding school in Machakos. Okay. So we were sent home to go and bring money. Mm -hmm. When I got home, I remember that day very clearly because uh, we used to live in a single Mabati house a very tiny house. Mm -hmm. So I, I knocked the door, nobody answered. I entered and then there was nobody in the living area. But I removed the curtain and found my mom helplessly sleeping on the bed. And uh, 
I called her mom. She was not even able to answer me, but she just uh, raised her head mm -hmm. and turned and looked at me. Mm -hmm. She saw me carrying my bag and everything, and then she was like, eh, Wacha tu nilea o wengine, pia wasome mbaka mali umefika. So that was like a soft way of mom telling me, you just remove your school uniforms mm -hmm. because you're not going back to school. I removed my school uniform and stayed at home. But it, it pained me so much to see my mom bedridden. We are hungry, we don't have food. We are not able to ask her for food from her. And herself, she cannot go see a doctor. She has no money. She doesn't even have any drugs she's taking. So I remember I talked to a friend of mine called Wanja. Wanja used to work as a house manager in Banana. And I told her, now I thought as a firstborn, I have to think and think very fast and bring a solution. Mm. So I called Wanja and I told Wanja, you know what? Uh, I'm at home and I'm looking for a job. Get me a job. And then Wanja made a joke and said, Sasa wae na vile umesoma umefika for umdiri utafanya kazi gani? Then I was like, Wanja, I'm not joking. I desperately need a job. And she asked me which job. She, I told her, I want a job like yours. And she asked, are you, you are going to work as a house girl? I told her, yes. I went as soon as you get the job. So Wanja worked very fast. Uh, fortunately, there's a lady who had told her that she's looking for a house girl. Mm -hmm. So the following day, Wanja called me. Uh, the lady is coming to pick me. And remember all this, I'm doing without informing my mom because I knew and I knew my mom would not consent me to go for, to work as a house girl. But I needed to do something to help her because she's helpless. And where are your siblings this time? They are there. My, are my sister is small. Yeah, they're in primary school. My sister is small and my brother is very tiny at that so time. So they go to school and come back, there's nothing to eat? There's nothing. We just depend on neighbors, well-wishers who are passing by, bring us a packet of hunger, we cook. I remember actually one very painful moment I hate remembering is early morning when we would wake up and there's nothing, then we would make white porridge without sugar and take it just like that. I used to feel so bad. So Wanja got me a job in, a, in, a, in, a, in Buruburu Estate where I worked for a lady called Mrs. Ndongo for two years. Ah, yeah. so how did life change after you got that job? So when life changed, mm. because uh, let me say something very funny. Yeah. You see now, in our home, we were taking white porridge without sugar. Yeah. So these are house, house helps that we see in our houses. Yeah. Sometimes the motivation for them to work and work very well for you mm -hmm. is when you give them the, 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 the freedom yeah. to eat what you're eating, enjoy what you're even frying that egg yeah. and they eat it. Mm -hmm. It could motivate them to do a good job. And in actual sense, if somebody mm. is taking care of you, taking care of your children, yes. they shouldn't be treated differently. Yes. Yeah, it's very unfortunate that some mothers are very mean. Yeah, um, it's very but unfortunate. But of course, it's also good to put a balance that mm. some of them don't have to waste. Mm. Like some of them, they become, they, they now begin to become sympathizers of neighbors. Oh, yeah. I had one who used to get food from my house <laughs> and give everybody else in the neighborhood <laughs> who does not have food. So I would come and say uh, and look and check. I bought stuff. Oh. Said, ah, niliona jilani? Oh. Hana chakula. Oh. <laughs> And of course, at that time, I was running also a tight budget. Yes, so yes, the, yes. of course, there has to be that generosity yes. when somebody is in your house. Yeah, I always tell house help when I'm talking to them because yeah. I do talk to them. Yeah. When you have gone to somebody's house, yes. that is your home. It's true. And I always tell them, work until God is impressed with what you're doing. Yes, Don't too. impress the person who has employed you. Yeah. Impress God yes. because the rewarder is God. It's God. Even when the house owner is away yeah scrub that floor yeah until god will just see you're not scrubbing with a brush yes. but you're scrubbing with your heart wow that's awesome and that is what will bring blessings into your life yeah so yeah. that takes me back with the 1500 yeah how did you improve the situation of your mother how your siblings how how was that how was it working you're working and they're at home yeah they need that one was so miraculous for us mm -hmm. because me for me i'm eating well in mrs ndongo's house mm -hmm. i have everything mm -hmm. so i used to send all the money 
Okay. I only used to remove my tithes mm -hmm. and I said the rest of the, my, the money to my mom. Mm -hmm. So as, as, it was, as it was, she was able to get medication, go see a doctor. Oh, good. And with prayers, Mrs. Dongo actually helped me with prayers because mm -hmm. we used to pray and fast with her. Wow. We used to have days for prayer and fasting specifically for my mom. Wow. So with time, God healed her and mm -hmm. now she's well. Wow. Yeah. So now back to my form three. Mm -hmm. Now I, it, I, my school life is terminated. Mm -hmm. I'm now officially a house manager. Mm -hmm. I have started now working. And uh, I used to work every year thinking that this next year I'm getting scholarship to go back to school. Oh, yeah. Actually, I talked to Mrs. Ndungu and I told her, because she used to go to one of the big churches in Buruburu, mm -hmm. I, I told her, please, let's talk to the church to give me scholarship to go to, to back to high school. And the church told us to do a letter. Mm -hmm. I did a letter. But I don't know the person the letter landed to, mm -hmm. but the person said, this girl, I've always been seeing her with Mrs. Ndungu. They are very close and I think they're relatives. Uh -huh. And Mrs. Ndungu is a rich woman. She should take care of her relatives and stop bothering the church. Uh -huh. That is how good our relationship was. <laughs> I hope that did not bring trouble. No, it didn't bring trouble uh -huh. because Mrs. Ndungu was very encouraging. She told us, okay, now you're my daughter. Let's continue praying. And we continue praying. And, but she kept telling me, God will one day open a day for you, a, a door for you. Mm -hmm. So we uh, we kept uh, praying about it, and it's something that was so deep in my heart mm -hmm. because I was passionate about education. Mm -hmm. I remember most of the time I would be sent to go to the shop, and uh, maybe it's in the evening. I meet students going home wearing their uniforms. Mm -hmm. If I'm in a kibanda, nikichagua mboga, naacha kuchagua mboga, then I look at the student, namzindikisha na macho namzindikisha until the, wow. the student vanishes. Then I come back, I start buying whatever I was buying. Wow. By that time, I wipe tears. And I tell God, God, one day make a door for me to go back to high school. Mm -hmm. Then in that church, I was very much into the youth service. We used to meet as the youth of that church. And every time, the, there was introduction, so everybody would say, my name is this and this, I'm in the University of Nairobi, I do this, I do this. Then me, I can tell them I'm a house girl. So my name was like, my name is Gladys and I love Jesus and I sit down. Jesus was your <laughs> qualification. <laughs> so I used to tell God, please God, one day give me something, something to say, something what, what I do, yes, yeah. what I do. So it used to be very difficult, but at the same time, an inspiration. I worked for Mrs. Dungo for two years. After two years, I got a better job mm -hmm. to cook for a school in Buruburu still mm -hmm. called Baraka Primary. Mm -hmm. And there's something I want to mention about that day when I got that job. And I want to encourage everybody. You know people joke around with tithe. Yes. I remember that day, it was on a Sunday I had, I had gone to church mm -hmm. and I had too many troubles. My mom is sick, the money is not enough. Mm -hmm. So this day I'm contemplating, not removing the tithe. Mm -hmm. I send my mom all the money and I'm telling God, God, do you understand? Mm -hmm. The money is little, the needs are many. Yeah. But I heard a voice speaking to me mm -hmm. in church. And that voice is, Emma, kupatia mungu siyo kukua maskini. And I remember I just painfully removed my tithe from my past. Painfully. One, 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 150. Yes. <laughs> I painfully removed it. Mm. And I gave that tithe. Then the church where we usually go, mm. we, we used to go that time, to Kimadisa service, you go outside there, then you greet each other mm -hmm. like that. When you are greeting each other, a strange woman came to greet me. I said, wow, I'd like to talk to you. And then after greeting everybody, she pulled me and we talked. And she told me, Can you, would you like to work as a cook in our school? And I told her, yes, I want. And by that time, the salary is big. I'm actually able now even to rent my house. Aye. As I do the job, I have changed my after status. That sacrificial tithe. Yes. Yeah. A stranger, she just said, I want to talk to you. Wow. So I went back to Mrs. Ndongo because I had respected her like mm -hmm. my mom. Mm -hmm. I told her the situation. There is this woman who has approached me in church. She's offering this job. Mm -hmm. The job is paying this much. Wow. Do I take it? What do you think? And Mrs. Ndongo, just being a mother to me, she said, I would really have loved you to stay in my house, yeah. but you take the job. Wow. It's changing your status. I took the job with her blessings 
and I went and I rented my house and now started a better hey! job. <laughs> wow. That time I was really encouraged. Actually, any time I feel like, you know, giving tithe is not a walk in the park. Yes. Sometimes you, yeah. you struggle. struggle. So yeah. when I feel like I'm struggling, I go back to that day. Yeah. And I get the energy to do it. Yeah. So I want to encourage people to stick to it because it speaks for you. So I got a good job and I started now working. When I was in Mrs. Dongo's place, one house after hours, there was a young man. And this young man was also a houseboy in that house. He was able to break through. All <laughs> <laughs> so this young man, he was also born again. Na nona kasichana kana tumatumu wa duka ivo. So he could stop me, say hi, and we started knowing each other. Mm -hmm. Then with time, he started inviting me for, he was a very good Bible teacher. Mm -hmm. So you, we would do prayers together, read Bible together and all. The, before we know it, we are dating. Mm -hmm. So we started dating. And now when I, when I moved to my new job, we became serious. Mm -hmm. And now we started thinking of a wedding. But I remember now I told him, me, before I get married, I want first of all to continue looking for scholarship so that I can go back to high school. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, ma'am, Majama Uscheze Nawao, Aliambia, don't worry. School is the only thing troubling you. You will go to school even in my house. And uh, I'm and the one I'm who will take you to school. Nani house manager. <laughs> Can I be a babe? You'll go to school. Don't oh, worry. I tell you, God oh, yes. is <laughs> I mean, you're gonna... getting a double blessing. A double, double. Eh. Marriage, <laughs> husband, <laughs> nashule. <laughs> okay. So I got some. Ah, to end to kiendanga. So we got married. <laughs> like in church. Yes, we did our church. Remember, we are born again. What? So we have. We are following the protocols. So we we got married in church. Mm -hmm. So we did our wedding, mm -hmm. which was supported by people because we had nothing. Wow. The, re the reverend of the church we used to go right uh, that time, right now they're in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, the reverend is the one who ordered our cake from her sister in Uganda because we could not buy anything. Everything was donated to us, even the rings, even everything. Wow. We could not afford the wedding. Wow. But basically we had to do a wedding because we are born again. Mm -hmm. So we did the wedding and we started life. Mm -hmm. Now, when we started staying together, I'm still thinking about your mom and your siblings. By this time, now, they, my mom is, is well. The, now, their status has improved as you as in. Yes, because okay. now I'm, I'm able to send this second job, I yeah. was being paid 4,500. Ah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> now, the title was 450. <laughs> So I mean heavyweight. I'm earning 4,500. Three times. Yes, three times. Wow. Oh, Viewer, what a story and what a guest. Um, I think this is so inspiring because it has a spiritual perspective and it's also very, very hilarious the way our guest is sharing it. So see you after the break. So welcome back, Javier. My, my guest is Gladys, and uh, her story is just inspiring. So I don't want to take much more, more time. So yes. tell me now, we were at a place where now you get married, and yeah. where wishes have supported you. Yes. Okay. So we, we are supported, now we are legally married. Yes. Now when I got married, is when now I, you know we are told love is blind. Yes. There, there, there are times it, it start, starts having eyes. Yeah. So when now you get settled, I don't know where the eyes come from. Yeah. I the know. blindness goes. Yes. So uh, now I started asking my husband, you remember you promised I'm going back to school. Mm -hmm. And I kept reminding him and I kept reminding him. And he never refused. Mm -hmm. He always used to tell me, I'll take you back to school. I'll take you back to, sco to school, procrastinating all the time. Is he working this time? We are struggling. He doesn't have a job. The job he does is uh, kupewa school, zamatatu. Oh, wow. But me, I'm still holding on to the promise he, he gave me. Mm -hmm. So he told me, one day I'll be rich and I'll take you back to school. So uh, after some time, I got pregnant and I delivered my daughter. When I gave birth to my daughter is when I thought now, wait, wait a minute. I think now is time for me to be on the driver's seat in regards to my life. And I told him, you know, this thing of me going back to school is really troubling me. 
and it has to happen somehow. God has to make a way. So when my daughter was very young, I started a small business in Dandora, selling the Kibanda business, the Skumawiki and all that, mm -hmm. at Dandora Phase 2, Apogestan. So I started my business and my focus was one, I am saving to go back to school. Wow. And I gave myself a, a, a target for one year, to save for one year and go back to school. So in that one year, I managed to save 12,000. And, uh, and still raising your kid and, you know, being yeah. married. You know. And, and being married. Mm -hmm. So uh, towards the end of that year in November, I started moving to schools to get a vacancy for the following year, January. I went to several schools and they didn't admit me. I, was, I didn't know why they're not admitting me until I went to the last school. This last school, the head teacher told me, you know, young girl, we cannot admit you because you're going to be a role model to our students oh. that you can get married, be a mother, be coming from your husband's house to school. Wow. So he was very honest with me, an honesty that hurt me. But I thank God the same teacher, God used him. He told me, but you know what, go to Dandora Secondary, because it's a public school, they take students like you. I, I came out of his office feeling so beaten, so broken. And I remember I told God, on my way, I told God, God, I am giving it my last, my last try. If it fails at Dandora Secondary, I'm going back to selling my Skuma Wiki, and I forget about Shule. So I went to... Dandora Secondary, and let me tell you, Reverend, the Bible says that God will never leave you stranded. He's always our source of help, our fortress. Mm. When it has come to your end, that is where God starts. Mm. When I went to Dandora Secondary, I found God had arrived before me wow. and had prepared the principle in a way that I've never, ever been able to explain up to today. So I entered the principal's office. I found the late Mrs. Lucy Mwangi, may her soul rest in peace, mm -hmm. a very good woman that I love. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Lucy Mwangi, I entered to her office and I started explaining about myself. I told her, I am a mother, I am a wife, I am a businesswoman, and I want to come back to school. So she asked me, so what do you want? I told her, I want you to admit me as a private candidate. All I want is a certificate with my name. Grades do not matter. But Mrs. Mwangi, having had listened to my story very cleanly, can I be a Gladys Apana? Having listened to your story, you are the kind that becomes great. I'm not admitting you as a private candidate. I pleaded with her, admit me in Form 3. She said, I'm not admitting you in Form 3. I'm admitting you in Form 2. And she was speaking to me very authoritatively. I'm, taking you, I'm admitting you in Form 2. And I will actually not even give you interview. For seven years out of school, you can remember nothing. You are the only student who will not do interview. I was so crushed. I, I celebrated, um, I've been accepted, mm -hmm. but I was so crushed. Because I'm telling her, Molimu, I'm married. I don't have like full consent from my husband to come back to school. I'm, I don't know how to do it to tell her, him that I'll be in school for three years. Mm -hmm. And she told me, let me tell you, when God uses people to bless you, sometimes mm -hmm. it's not soft. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you think when God is bringing people to yeah, bring, bring you to bring another the, level, the, yeah, the they will pamper you yeah. and, oh, sometimes they can be very tough mm -hmm. for you to get to that level. Mrs. Mwangi was not ready to listen to me. And she pulled a, an admission letter envelope, handed it over to me very harshly, and she, and she told me, young girl, if you are ready, to come to school, meet me here in January. If not, just stay at home. And she dismissed me like that. And I went back. Now I'm here, I'm stranded. Where do I start telling my husband that I'm supposed to be in school for three years? The money is not an issue because I have saved 12,000. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I went and I told him he was not happy about it. Ah. Yes. Okay. Because remember, at that time, my baby is breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. So for him, he's like, you're supposed to be at home, take care of the baby and breastfeed the baby. After all, you have a Skumawiki business that is doing well. I told her, me, I'm feeling something higher calling than selling this Skuma. Mm -hmm. He could not understand it. So it didn't go so well. Anyway, I still went back to high school 
and joined form two at 26 years and a mother of one. At 26 years? Yes. I used to be age mate with teachers. You are truly gorgeous. <laughs> you are truly gorgeous. <laughs> And you got yourself a uniform? Yes. How I, did, how, okay. I would wear socks, everything even tie, everything. I'm a regular student. And I thank God. God knows how to balance things. Because I used to, because of the poverty that time, you I was petite. very tiny. Yeah. Very tiny. I was even tiny than some students. Yeah. But years, 26 years, age mate with teachers. At home where I'm staying, you know those plot is at Andorra. Yeah. It was the hardest time for me because I remember I would come out of the house to go to school and women would meet outside there to laugh at me. Ha 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 ha. Sasa uya meenda shule and they would talk and they would hurt me. When I wash my uniform, I never used to hang them outside they to dry. They would take it away from No, me. they would laugh. Oh. So I used to wash them and dry them inside the house. Until now, I came to a point whereby I developed a mechanism in the morning when I'm going to school. I wear as, as another home dress, short one. Then I would roll my school skirt and wear a jacket, a home jacket. So I would roll my skirt jacket up to here. Then I have a home jacket so that they don't laugh at me. Then when I near the school, strategically I look for a dark corner. I remove my skirt, uh, my yeah. school skirt. Then it is longer than the card dress. I remove the jacket, put it in my bag, and now I'm a student and I enter school. I love your determination. <laughs> wow. It was And tough. who stays with the baby? I had my sister. So your, your sister came in to help? Yeah, my sister came. What was this husband of yours now? <laughs> now he's still there. Him, he, I remember one thing he told me when I reported for the first day. You know, he was, me sometimes I understand him. Because imagine, Reverend, un, people are laughing at you, they are telling you you are a husband to a student. Uh, by the way, I get it. So uh, sometimes I understand he's also confused, he's also feeling embarrassed. He's, he, sometimes I understand him. Because he came home and he, tell, he told me, this madness of your education, I don't want it in my house. And I am not part of it. I told, I told him, I don't know how to stop it. So, it started bringing a lot of conflict in our marriage. A lot of conflict. And yet, before you married, you had already told him. Before we married, he even promised. A lesson to learn for people so who are looking forward honest. to get married. Yeah. yeah. So, he was not honest. So, me, I, I continued with my schooling. Now, my 12,000 started getting finished. Because now you had to close the Sukuma Wiki business. I have to close it. Yeah. Actually, during break time, all the other students call each other. Come, I show you the lady who has been cutting Skuma Wiki for us. Come, come. And you know, when I joined school, I cut my hair short to change my identity. Yeah. But they would still identify me. See, ni ule ule mama, likuwa natukatia Skuma pale jestan. Ni ye ye, ni ye ye. So, break time. But they will not bully you. No. But, but the embarrassment of Sayoto. It was interesting, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But when I break time. Yeah. So me, I, uh, when, just when my, my 12,000 is getting finished, I came up with a plan. Mm -hmm. And I told my close best friends in, in class, she's called Cynthia Judy and the other three. I told her, you know what, Cynthia, on Saturday, because now by that time, Mrs. Mwangi was very helpful to me, but the, the BOM would question, why is this student not being chased home when the others are going? Have school fees is again accumulating. So Mrs. Mwangi called me and told me, just see, see who in your family can help you to be paying small, small money so that I'm not in trouble with the BOM. Hey, in my family, I have no one I can go to. So I told Cynthia Judy, what we are going to do. On Saturday, I'll not be coming to class. You'll be writing notes for me. On Monday, you update me what the teacher said. Saturdays, I'll be looking for three houses. I go wash clothes, I deposit the money in the school account, then I will not be chased. Because something in me was telling me, if I'm chased away from school for the second time, I'll not pull it again. Wow. And Akina Cynthia told me, it's okay, Glado, we are going to support you. But just before I implemented that plan, God came. God came and uh, we got people from Barclays Bank, came to our school and they wanted to do the CSR, paint our school, plant trees, facelift our school and all that. 
So that Saturday, the head teacher told us, you have every student from form one to form four have to come to, to school. In school uniform, we welcome our guests and do the work with them. Mm. Me, I did not go. It was those days I was feeling God has forgotten somebody like me ever existed. Because now I could see myself dropping out of school for the second How time like this. How was your performance this time? My performance was miraculous. Wow. Hey, you know what, Devlin? When I hear you say, hey. <laughs> I... <laughs> you know, there are things God will do and you'll never be able to explain to anyone. Yeah. I've been out of school for seven years. Mm -hmm. I'm schooling with kids who are 10 years younger than me, mm -hmm. 10 plus years actually. Mm -hmm. Then I come and we do our first term exam. We do the cuts, those ones are never announced. Mm -hmm. And then we do the end term exam. I remember I told God, God, me, I like going to a closet with God. Mm -hmm. And I, I told God, God, me, I'll give my, I'll sell myself away in these books. I'll do everything, even if it's boiling them, I drink. Mm -hmm. I will do my best. But God, do your part. Do what only you can do. Wow, require faith. I'm telling you, Reverend, I used to study. If I met you during those days and somebody accused me of taking bangi, yeah. my the eyes used to be this, like red. Wow. I'm not sleeping enough. When I come back at in, in the evening, remember I have my baby waiting for mm. me to breastfeed. Yeah. So I hold her on this hand. She's breastfeeding. This hand is doing my homework. Wow. I used to read, but God did his part. Mm -hmm. When we did our first time exam, I was so shocked. The head teacher came in our class, issued all the report forms mm -hmm. and remained with one in her hand. And me, I've not received the report form. So you knew you were done? I said, I am done. I am ashamed in this class. Now I'm going to be embarrassed in front of everybody. And then now the teacher was, you know the way they hold? Yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're saying, now, I want you to listen and listen very well. There is this one student. By that time, I'm already dead inside of me. Yeah. When she's saying there is this one student. Yeah. And then the next thing he said, who has really impressed the entire teaching fraternity? And I'm like, wow. Then you see young. Yeah. Yeah. And this student, and then the teacher talked, talked very positive things. And then she says, and this student is none other than Gladys Wanjiku. Looking at my report form, I was position two. Wow. I don't know how God did it, but I remember asking God, do what only God can do. Wow position two. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, Reverend, if you go to Dandra Secondary, in from 2S up to from 4S, that position remained mine throughout. Wow. wow. So, walikuwa muna soma na mama, ako na mtoto na na washinda. Because I used to be position two. A so now you had already accepted your mama and yeah. everything was okay. I had already accepted. Uh -huh. And the good thing is that uh, Mrs. Mwangi mobilized the entire staff room for me. Well, they were on your side. They were on my side. And actually she issued a command. Mm -hmm. I want every teacher to give special attention to Gladys and assist her. Me, I used to get uh, teachers' uh, textbooks. I used to get, teachers were very supportive. Wow. And they used to talk to me, don't worry. If being a wife is nothing, you can still study being a You know, they used to really encourage me. Wow. Until I would feel, actually, I, I have a support system. Wow. So, now we are told to come because Barclays Bank is coming. Mm -hmm. I didn't go because I'm feeling down mm -hmm. that I'm dropping out of school for the second time. Not knowing... God is sending me a miracle, but I'm staying, staying home. So the Barclays people came and, uh, and, and they did the work. They planted the trees, painted the school and all that. Afterwards, they talked with a few students and, and they were asking, who do you think is very needy and bright? They happened to ask Cynthia Judy, my oh, best friend. My best friend, oh. Yeah, and now Cynthia Judy, let me tell you, God-given friends. Mm -hmm. People who can recommend you even in your absence. Mm -hmm. Cynthia Judy spoke like she's speaking about herself. <laughs> she said, my friend Gladys, da -da -da -da, she's like this, she's like, hey, hey, hey. hey this lady, she's called Madame Mwago. Mm -hmm. Hey, Madame Mwago, Kaombia, now, this is my number. And she was the team leader. Mm -hmm. This is my number. Give to that Gladys, mm -hmm. tell her I want her to call me. 
So on Monday I come to school and now Cynthia meet, meets me at the gate and then she's telling me, Gladys, why didn't you come on Saturday? Now you see these backless people, they want to, sub, to, sco, to, uh, to sponsor some student, you didn't come. But anyway, I talked to Madam Mwago, because I'm going to number and you. Me I took the number, in the evening I called Madam Mwago. Hey. Oh, and you can be, yeah, this Gladys. Yeah, you are Gladys. Yeah, yeah, I heard about you. Actually, are you able to put your story in writing? And I told her, yes, I can. Mm -hmm. Do it, I'm sending a rider to pick it. Wow. Yes. I did my story in writing. A rider was sent from Barclays Plaza to come and pick them, the story. So I think they wanted to go and share it in the department. Just hold that thought. Our viewers, you can hear the power of a passion and a dream that has come to pass. And you can tell, you can even tell that my guest Gladys is so excited. The way she talks about it, she makes me want to go back to school. See you <laughs> after the break. <laughs> Wow, so they send a rider and they wanted to discuss about your story. Yes, okay. so they send the rider and I sent the story and we waited. So the head teacher kept telling us, the head teacher called me and she told me these backless people want to sponsor a group of students. But one has to be in the criteria of getting grade A or B. And she told me, Gladys, I'm very happy with you because I didn't have to speak for you, your grades spoke for you. Wow. So I have forwarded your name, let us pray. Let me tell you, I used to pray, I used to pray that God will favor me, because we are many. Mm. Let me tell you, God favored me. And they came back and they gave the list of the names of the students that would be sponsored, and they were 30. Gladys was one of them. Wow. I, I screamed that afternoon. Mm. I screamed, I... I didn't know what to tell God. I was so happy. This time you're in form? Now I'm in form three. Okay. I, I have a lot of accumulation of fees from yeah. when I entered because yeah. I only paid the first time and bought uniform. Yeah. So now the backlist has come and they came to deliver a check. You know, they, they, they did one you big, big check, check. Yeah. a lump sum. And they called the 30 of us in a school hall. And then now we are seated and then they are talking to us. And that is where now God met with me in person. Because one of them stood up and now was encouraged. To her, she was encouraging us. And she's telling us, oh, student, study very hard. You see these people who are seated here? Actually, this money that we are paying this school fees with, it's not the, the bank money. We, are, we sat down as a department and saw it fit to support a few of you. So we have all given a standing orders. Our salaries will be deducted something small every month for you to study. People crapped and people were yelling and shouting and happy. Me, I was like this and I was crying. I was crying. I was crying. I was just saying, my God, how can somebody who does not know even my second name mm -hmm. sacrifice that much? Every month you have a standing order for your money to be deducted, to pay my fees. Me, I was in tears when others are shouting. Yeah. And after the guest went, I remember now that's when I went back to the crusade again with God. You know, God does things in my life, Reverend. Mm -hmm. That overwhelmed that me. Is that where the vision for what you do was born? Thank you. Okay. I went to the, to the crusade with God again. And I told God, God... I don't know, I don't know how ever to thank you. Mm -hmm. Because remember how that day was for education. Yes. And this big miracle has happened. Mm -hmm. Sasa Did Aguna, they clear your uh, arrears? Not even clearing. They paid our arrears, paid our current, and they requested for this to be fast forwarded to form four. They asked for that calculation. As if that was not enough, they said, do a calculation for us of all their examination materials when they reach form four. Wow. And give us that amount. So, since it will buy our examination material before we reached Form 4. Books, textbook, every revision book we, we wanted, we just used to ask. So that we may change status. So that we may go to our bazoo. Teacher, I could analyze your kufkuzana to ambo. Backless kids go back to class. And then, hey, yes. Wow. Backless kids go back to class. And you're like, oh my God. And I remember. Before that miracle happened, 
I remember having a conversation with my husband, requesting him, please, I'm being chased away for the second time. Help me. And he told me, remember, I told you I don't want that madness. And he made it very clear to me. I'm be glad this. The burden of your education was to be carried by your mother and your father. Oh, good. Leave me out of this madness. So when God did this miracle, I remember I went back to him and I told him, remember. By this time, remember, it's very hostile at mm -hmm. home because I'm doing things against his will. Yeah. I told him, you know, you, you told me that the, the work for my education was supposed to be taken over by my dad, who I don't have because I'm a child of a single mother. Mm -hmm. But what you did not know, you provoked my daddy in heaven. And my dad in heaven has cleared my school fees. Everything paid, settled. Me ni mtoto wa bazu sasa. Kazi ni kusoma. You know, even him, he got shocked. He got shocked. And now, I, I went to the closet with God. And I told God, God, I want, I want to pray for two prayers. Prayer number one, my God and my Father. Even if I was to be in the list of those who will fail the exam, turn around tables. <laughs> I pass this exam, not for me, but for, the, for these people, yeah. my, my sponsors, yeah. so that they will not be discouraged. I don't yeah. want to be the source of their discouragement. Please make me pass for them. Mm -hmm. that prayer was number two. Prayer number two. I prayed to God and I told him, God, I know your word says, you, do, you, 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 you better not vow before God than make a vow and break it. Mm -hmm. But I told God, I'm intentionally making a vow before you. And help me, God, because one day when you bless me, mm -hmm. I will be a blessing to somebody else. Wow. And that is actually where the name came Blessed from. Blessed to transform. Blessed to transform. You share your blessings, you transform somebody's life. Okay. I want to be a blessing to and somebody. And God has done that. I want to fast forward because we have a few minutes. Mm. When you are introducing yourself, you said you're a single man. Yeah. So, of course, that tells me the marriage did not work. The marriage did not work. So what, what actually happened for, so that you exit the marriage? So what happened, when I now got to Form 4, mm -hmm. now I don't know, my husband started feeling a lot of insecurities. Yeah. And he, he gave me terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. He said me, he told me, because now you are almost done with this madness of yours, in this year when you are sitting for KCC, you have to get pregnant so that towards end of the year when you are going to, fit, to do the last paper, actually Nataka Uchukulio from the exam room to the delivery room, you come back with a child. Okay. I told, her, I told him, I, I, it's not bad to give, a, to give birth to another child, but the headache of preparing for the exam cannot go hand in hand mm -hmm. with pregnancy. Yeah. That is what broke the camel's back. But today I thank God. So you left? So things didn't, didn't work. I finished the exam still in his house, but it went going worse to worse, worse to worse. Was he violent? He was, uh, he was very verbally toxic. Okay. Verbally toxic. And things went worse to worse. And uh, I wasn't ready to give away what I have sacrificed so much okay. for. Yeah. So when I did my, my KCSE, mm -hmm. remember now my sponsors have paid only up to Form 4. Yeah. One of the motivational speakers called me to find out how I have performed, Mr. Mbogwa Mumbi. May God bless him. Mr. Mbogwa Mumbi asked me, Gladys, how, how are the results? And I told him, oh, the results were good. I got a grade B, and I have a calling letter to join University of Nairobi. Wow. Mr. Mbogwa asked me, so when are you joining campus? I told him, I'm not joining. I'm preparing to revive my Kibanda business. Mr. Mbogwa told me, devil is a liar. You will not sacrifice that much, and we watch you go back to selling the skuma. You know when God puts angels in your yes, path? Yes. So Mr. Mbogwa told me, Gladys, I usually have a radio, a radio program in a certain radio station on this day. I want you to come. The next show, I'm telling about your story. We appeal to Kenyans to pay for your school fees. We went to the radio station. We did my story, and Kenyans gave. Wow. Kenyans supported me until I was able to join campus. So I joined campus, all the money that was sent, Mr. Mboko told me, all that money, go pay to the school, school account and bring me the receipt. I paid and I brought him the receipt. So when I joined the campus, 
Now I applied again the help loan. It came through for me in a big way. Mm -hmm. And then I, now by, by this time we have already separated with, uh, with my husband. And you're living on your own. I'm living on my own with my baby. So now I have to move my, my classes from day to evening. So that uh, during the day I can go and hustle. Evening I go to class. Mm -hmm. So during the day you will meet me promoting uh, yogurt, shoe polish, anything in the supermarket. Then in the evening I'm in the class. And I survived like that. So what, uh, what uh, course did you do? I did uh, sociology and okay. peace studies. Okay. I graduated in 2014. Mm -hmm. And wow. uh, I stayed 2014, 2015 without a proper job. 2016 I got a job. Wow. And when I got a job, I remembered my vow mm -hmm. that I made before God. Yes. And I told him, God, this is the time. Even I remember I got my job uh, in February 2016. Mm -hmm. And I told God, even before I have started feeling the sweetness of this salary, mm -hmm. I want to implement my vow. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to support somebody I also don't know their second name. Wow. Because the ones who supported me didn't care about who I am. Yeah. I want to support some, not even my family relative, yeah. somebody I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I started now going to the slum and doing a lot of activities in the slum. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how now we picked all the activities. We do the feeding program. I mobilize my friends, we, we, we bring money from our pockets and pay school fees wow. for some of these students. Mm -hmm. Because I said even before we start, we have not gotten to a level of getting donors. Yes. But I said because when... But you already have them. Yeah. You have local donors. That yes, given local you. donors. Just as the Bible says, the given it shall come back to you. A yes. good measure pressed down, mm. shaken together, mm. shall men give to your bosom. Yeah. It means the principle of giving. Yes. Nothing comes back to you yes. until it goes to the ground. Yes. So the, 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 the people you're calling friends are donors. They are donors. But it depends on our definition of donors. Oh. <laughs> you mean international donors. <laughs> Oh my God, God yeah. forgive us. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I said, uh, because the people who educated me were removing money from their pocket, yeah. I first of all want to perfect that. Okay. Feel how it feels to remove it from my pocket. And, and it pesa. always begins like that. Yes. Because most of the times people refuse to give from where they are mm. because they imagine a bigger picture of people that are willing to donate from out there. And I, I am a testimony. Yes. I know I have a testimony. Mm. That even most of those we call international donors, mm. they do the same. Yes. The principle is the same. It's the same. They get money from their pockets yeah. because there is no free money anywhere. There is no free money. They give freely. So yeah. if somebody wants to be a blessing, mm to you mm. and probably be party to what you're doing, feeding a hundred people in Korogosho mm. every day, children actually that mm. are sickly. Mm. So how would they reach you? Do you have, are you reachable on Facebook? Do you have a number mm. so that people can be a blessing to you? Yeah, I have got a number. Yeah. And I want to, first of all, before I give the, that number, tell them what Proverbs 11.25 says. Yes. It says, he who refreshes others so, with themselves mm -hmm. be refreshed. Amen. Let us count it a blessing when you have an opportunity to help somebody who is in need. Okay. Um, I have a number. Yeah, kindly speak to that camera. Yeah, my number is uh, 0713. 0713 314 314 522 522 yeah say it again 0713 314 522 and you can get me on facebook my facebook name is first lady glado first lady glado yeah Hey, Our are. organization <laughs> page name is Blessed to Transform. Amen. Yeah. So when do you do the feeding? Like even right now during the season of COVID, you're still doing the same? Every day. Every right day. now from, uh, as I wake up on this seat, yeah. I'm headed to Korogocho okay. slums. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because kids have to eat lunch okay. and they have to supervise that. Great. Yeah. Avia, you'll be watching this in the evening. So don't worry when you hear she's going. She's, she's not beating the curfew time. Yeah. <laughs> God bless you and God do you good. It's always a joy to be a host of gorgeous women. It's indeed inspiring. Mm. Shalom.